Welcome back. Today we'll be looking at section 4.1, maxima and minima, and I'd like to start with problem number 37. And problem 37 says, find the critical points of this function f of x equals x squared minus 10 on the interval negative 2 to 3, and then find the absolute extrema of f on that interval. All right, so anytime that we want to find the absolute extrema of some function on some closed interval, there are really two places where those absolute extrema can occur. The first place that those absolute extrema can occur is at an actual critical point of the function that lives inside of that interval. So the very first thing that we need to do here is we need to find all the critical points of this function inside that interval. And it's important to say inside that interval because there, it is possible to find critical points of this function that are outside that interval, and we just don't care about those. We only care about the critical points of this function that live inside this interval. Those we care about. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and find the critical points of this function. And the way that I find critical points is I take the derivative of that function and I look for any places where that derivative could be zero or any place where that derivative could be undefined. Okay, so let's look at the derivative of this function. f prime of x then is going to be equal to just, in this case, very simply, 2x. Okay, so now that I have the derivative of the function, I want to ask, okay, are there any places where this derivative could be zero or are there any places where this derivative could be undefined? This particular derivative, there's no way it's ever going to be undefined. To be undefined, I'd have to somehow generate some division by zero. This thing's never going to have division by zero. The bottom is never zero. And so the only place where I'm going to get a critical value is if that derivative is zero. So I set it equal to zero. Solve for x, and I get that a critical point, I'll say a critical point, is where x is equal to 0. And then I need to ask the question, is 0 inside my interval? And in this case, 0 is inside the interval from negative 2 to 3. So we do have an actual critical point of this function inside this interval. OK, so now that I found my critical point, x equals 0, now I can answer the second part of the question. And the second part of the question asks me to find the absolute extrema of f on this interval. Okay, so to find absolute extrema, again, there are two places where absolute extrema can happen. They can happen at critical points, and they can happen at the endpoints of that interval. So I really need to test three things here. I need to test uh, the endpoint, negative 2. Just because it's an endpoint, I always test it to see if it's one of the absolute extrema. I need to test my critical point, 0. So I'll look at f of 0. And then I need to test my other endpoint, 3. And notice that I'm plugging all of these values in to the original function, not into the derivative. So I plug these three values, the endpoints and my critical point, which I only have one of in this case, into the original function, and I see what I get. Okay, so if I plug negative 2 into the original function here, I get negative 2 squared minus 10, which is 4 minus 10, or negative 6. I plug in 0 to my original function, and I get 0 squared minus 10, which is just negative 10. And if I plug in 3 to my original function, I get 3 squared minus 10, which is 9 minus 10, which is negative 1. Okay, so now that I've tested the three points, I just asked the question, well, which of these values is the very biggest thing? And in this case, the very biggest number is negative 1. So this number, negative 1, represents my absolute maximum over that interval. And the smallest number, which in this case is negative 10, negative 10 uh, represents my absolute minimum uh, on that interval. So now let's write an actual answer here. 
uh, I can say that f has an absolute maximum of, let's see, the absolute maximum, the biggest value that could come out of this function is negative 1 at x is equal to 3. So when x is equal to 3, my function is negative 1. And that's the biggest it could ever be. Also, f as an absolute minimum of uh, the very smallest that f could ever be is negative 10 at x is equal to 0. And this is my final answer for this problem. The biggest that the function could ever be on this interval is negative 1, and that happens at 3. The smallest it could ever be is negative 10, and that happens at 0.